So, ready? Ready when you are. All right. So, welcome everybody. And we're back with the second episode of Review for 2021. Um, this time, as you can see, um, I think this is truly the first episode ever that for of Review that we actually upload from our home offices. I think we it? once did it? it. We did one or didn't we? Did I'm we? not sure. I'm not sure. We were yeah. doing so many videos. I'm not sure. Is it refuel or is it crazy exactly. facts or is it uh, uh, da 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 da? <laughs> but we, we tried a, a, a home of it. Yeah. Anyway, exactly. Awesome. There we are. So it's a quite of a different setting this time. But um, as you might guess, and as you already saw, we are the same two people as last time. So it's myself, Robin, and Benjamin um, in his own home office, um, about 50 to 70 kilometers apart this time. Mm -hmm. um, but we're doing the same thing as usual, talking about <laughs> digital <Always>. management. <laughs> yeah, you might think we are, we're kind of crazy. It doesn't matter where those guys are located. They are just talking about fuel, digital fuel management. But yep, that's they the truth. Stop. That's true. Um, yeah. So this time, um, my first um, idea was to, to dive deeper, yeah, type a, dive a little bit deeper into the topic that we covered the last time. But I think, you know, we can always do it some, sometimes uh, at some other point in time. And um, when looking at the, at, at the episodes that we already did, there are still some very important, bigger topics that I would like to cover at the beginning of, uh, at the beginning of uh, this, uh, this show, even if we're doing it for such a long time already. It's um, already season, season two. <laughs> actually, we could say season two, it's true. <laughs> it sounds good. It, it definitely sounds good. Um, so this time, um, after talking about the network effect and um, both sides of the network, where we have the airlines and the interplaners on the other side, um, this time I, we want to talk about the data aspect of all this. So, of course, when we always talk about digitalization uh, of the fueling process, this also means that all of a sudden you have um, a massive amount of data related to your fueling process. Basically, every single process step that is um, connected to that, from the fuel order to the acknowledgement of the fuel order, over to the um, fuel summary, and the, all the process steps in between, is digitalized. So those are those are messages and information uh, with timestamps that um, are saved in the data database, and you all of a sudden have access to that. So um, this is really the topic that we want to focus on um, today and tell you a little bit more um, of the uh, about the advantages you as an airline and an entertainer, of course, because this time it actually. Um, matters for both sides of, of the network. Um, um, yeah, what you can, um, what and what are your benefits and how you can benefit from it um, as good as possible. So, um, Benjamin, as I already said, so you have all of a sudden this massive amount of data uh, covering your, um, your fueling process. Um, we have had a lot of customers in, in, in the past asking, well, what do I do with it? So, um, what was what would be your, let's say, number one suggestion to, to to airlines asking this question? So, all of a sudden, I have those insights. What do I do with it? Make use of it. <laughs> Ooh, bold statement. <laughs> oh, bold statement. Um, but let's let's be a bit more more precise. I think an, an important aspect we, we we have to mention and. People um, that are or who are working for, for an airline, or at least in the operations area of an airline, know that is um, that the the turnaround process, the overall turnaround process. Um, so not only the fueling process, but particularly the yeah. fueling process, um, is something like a, a blind spot when it comes to data. So they have a lot of data about the aircraft, the aircraft coming in, and they have a lot of a lot of uh, lots of data about the aircraft that is leaving. But the things that are happening in between, um, airlines have very, very limited 
data view on that. They have some own data they, they gather, but it, it's very, very limited. Um, and as we all know, turnarounds are one of the most essential aspects of an entire flight schedule. Um, there is the, 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 this is the, the, the slot where you waste time or where you lose time, not, maybe not wasting, but losing time, or where you can save time. Um, you can save much more time during a turnaround or lose much more time during a turnaround uh, compared to the, to the um, flight phase. Um, but airlines know very less about that process. Now, with a digital fueling process, you have at least a super, super clear picture what happens in the fueling process. And you can, from that point, analyze if and how the fueling process impacts your turnaround process. Are there delays due to the fueling process? And not only due to the fueling process, but due to which part of the fueling process? Is the fueler all, like, always late? Does the fueling take too long? Is uh, the, the handle of the, in, uh, the, the, the fuel, so does this take too long? What it, what it might be. So you have a very clear picture of what happens in fueling. And from that, you can do your analysis and try to improve your entire turnaround process, which I think is one of the most um, important goals an airline is trying to achieve. Yeah, true. Okay, Very so long story. Sorry about that. No, no, no. <laughs> just uh, compromising it, uh, uh, presenting a short story for it, just, just, just to make it, to, just to be sure um, that I understand what you mean. So basically, we have the, um, the, the, the this huge blind spot of the turnaround process. And all of a sudden, of course, we get a lot of insights about the, the fueling process itself. That can be helpful. It, it will be helpful. It will um, be, yep. If you only have those data, it will, of course, help you to improve and analyze your fueling process. But um, even more essential, it, it would be even more essential to, to put that in relation to all the other of processes that are happening along uh, the turnaround, right? Of course. So I think the, the, the first step, the quick win, is just looking at the, 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 the pure um, fueling data, because I think you can really get a lot of quick wins out of that immediately. Um, and it, it, I think it will be probably different to the different stations you, you get the data from, um, but quick wins, definitely. The second step, which is obviously a bit more complex, but potentially holds even more um, advantages and benefits for you is getting the, the fuel data into context with, with other relevant operational data. Might be yeah. check-in, might be weather, might be aircraft data, might be maintenance tech, whatever it might be, and yeah. getting some some even more detailed insights out of that. All right. But at least you you now for the first time you have the possibility to do that. You have the fundament to do that with the available fuel process relevant um, data. Yeah. Okay. Understood. So um, of course, and uh, one very important. Um, aspect here to add is of course that maybe there are some airlines out there that are doing this um, already maybe for the hub you know maybe they have um, all the the chances to analyze this um, this data at their hub only because all the outstations are um, the processes are different um, or they, they just don't have the resources at the moment to to copy what they're doing at their hub because of it. Mm -hmm. naturally this should this should be their number one priority but mm -hmm. um, of course, it's always important to look at your biggest outstations, maybe even at all of your outstations, to see if um, the if that same um, data standard is um, is applicable there. And it, and of course, it should be to to make um, the, the the highest level of um, analysis based on the data. Um, I think really one thing to add here is um, with a digital fueling process. Um, knowing that the, um, the process steps of the digital fueling process, because you have so many different interplaners on your, uh, on the other hand, at different outstations, it's, it's, it's very important um, to have a, a one, one process, one fueling process at all of your outstations. Because if you have mm -hmm. different ones, of course, it makes it difficult to, uh, to, compare, um, to compare data results from different outstations. As the, as the process is simply not not the sure, same. Sure. But, uh, yeah, with with the digital fueling, you have um, the, first, the the chance because the communication is always the same. 
Um, yep. So really, yep. it, it gives you um, a chance to streamline your your fueling process, and then of course make it more um, comparable across the whole network. Absolutely, absolutely. And one thing even to add is um, when you when you think about the the contractual fundamental framework you have with your with your fueling provider. Once you have that data available for each fueling provider, you can base the contracts on totally different SLAs. True. Simply because yeah. you have the data. Um, you, can, you can check if the fuel provider is always on time at, at the position, um, starts fueling at the defined time, and, and on and yeah. on and on. Um, yeah. Things you, you haven't been able uh, to, to do that before without having the data. So um, it, it offers you completely new possibilities when it comes to tracking the performance of the yeah. interplaner and vice versa of the airline, of course, too, and, and building SLAs upon that. So um, True. a complete new instrument you have. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, uh, it's reframing the whole negotiations that you can have with it and, and have much more um, performance-orientated um, contracts, for example. Yep, yep. Yeah. I think it, it also, just to add, to add one last thing, it, um, it eliminates some, uh, what's the right wording? Um, uh, is it pre-justice? So think about it. Yeah. What are you trying to say? Four Pre time purchases, right? Yeah. 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 So very often you have you have that 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 the, the um you have the people that that tell you the process at that airport is late because of the fueling, or the turnaround doesn't work because of the fueling, and very often it's just some some kind of gut feeling, right? And um, again, with the data you can really prove or assess if that is the truth if fueling process is the problem or probably that and, and we are talking about the the check-in the catering the whatever other process it might be um that really helps to to um put facts or put some 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 meat to the bones right to to really Absolutely. um it's about facts and figures and no longer about longer about a uh, gut feeling yeah that's it that's, that's really a very important point because if you if you, if you talk about moving away from gut feeling and measuring performance First thing that comes in your mind, of course, is KPI, um, KPI definition and KPI tracking. And yeah. um, of course, we, 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 we can have a look at um, um, this topic. I, I think we should have um, a, a look at this topic in a separate episode um, to really have a look at what kind mm -hmm. of KPIs are very interesting to yeah. um, really evaluate, track um, the performance of the fueling process across your network. But just in general, of course, you know, with all the data available, you might be able to have um, the average time of the fueling process measured by the time sum of the fuel order that uh, comes in, and of course, then the time sum of the fuel summary. From all of a sudden, you know exactly how long it takes from making the order to the um, completion of the order itself. So, um, and then of course, then Im imagine measuring that across all your stations. And all of a sudden, this one station that you're talking about, um, all yep. of a sudden, maybe is in the top three of the fastest fueling processes. So there is no longer the um, the fundament to say that, uh, well, it's the fueling process. But now, of course, True. you have to look at all the other process steps of the turnaround process and see, hmm, well, it seems to be something else. Yeah, of course, you have to do the analysis there. Um, but um, yeah, at least you can um, you can uh, say that it's not the fueling at that point. Yep, and I think it, it always depends on the on the airline, on their network, on their their mode or type of operation. They every airline is, although they are doing more or less the, the, the same job, flying from A to B. Every airline is facing different problems with their providers, with their airports, with their route network, with on on on. And yep. I think once you have that data available as an airline. Um, it simply starts a, a, a creative process and you, you start generating ideas, what you can do with the data, how the data can help you with question A, B, C, with challenge D, E, F. So um, once that is available, um, you just have a totally different starting point and can, can tackle or are able to tackle challenges in a totally different way um, than or compared to the uh, situation without, without the data. So it's, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's just, just massive to have that and it, it's it's also i would say uh it, it becomes more and more man, uh, mandatory to have the data available so 
I know it's it's a it's a very odd saying, but data is the new gold, and there's some truth in it, right? And yeah, really. you should at least have the gold of your most important process. Um, so I think, um, yeah, it, it more and more becomes mandatory to, to have that from, from my point of view. Yeah, so as you said, it, it, it becomes mandatory for airlines, um, but from our point of view, it also becomes more and more relevant um, for the, the interplaners on the other side. Because, Absolutely. Um, of course, the, the, the same things that um, we talk about for airlines, improving their processes, getting faster, <laughs> getting more, um, uh, what's the right word, uh, efficient at, that, and, at, at operating. Yep. Um, yep. It, can, it can, of course, not only um, speed up everything, but it also can help them save money. Um, we had, um, we had the, um, the, the, we, a couple of weeks ago, I think we had a talk with an, an interplaner uh, about this topic, and the thing was that um, over the, over the, over the time, they uh, really got to know how um, their process is working and how and how they can improve it. And all of a sudden, they were able to even cut down their fleet size and still operate mm -hmm. um, or still um, process the same number of fuel orders they have they they did before. And so yeah. all of yeah. a sudden you know, they saw, oh, wow, we're absolutely not efficient at all. We're operating two trucks uh, too much at the time. Uh, and it's simply one airport, you know? So mm -hmm. if, if, if you do that, if you're a bigger fuel supplier or, or interplane agent um, and you're doing that at all stations, at all of your stations, all of a sudden you might be able to cut down 20, 20 or even more um, trucks just by having the data, looking at it, and um, and analyzing so uh, it makes sense to you. Yep, yep. I, I would say in, in in one sentence, it it allows or it it enables you, regardless if you're an airline or an interplaner, to make fact based decisions. I think this is probably the the, the most important takeaway. Yeah. Um, you, you really have the data, and whatever decision might come comes uh, comes up in terms of efficiency, in terms of improvement, in terms of fuel truck reduction, whatever it might be, you really you have the data and you can make a decision based on, on facts rather than, than gut feelings, I think. And yeah, that's the most important aspect probably from, 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 from my point of view. Definitely. And then I think uh, moving away from gut feeling, getting down to data-driven processes, that's a really good point to, to end this episode, I would say, this time. Because, to be honest, I realized that our last episode was the longest that we have recorded, with about 25 minutes. So, okay. I think we might, we, we might need to cut down the length. I don't know at what minute we are right now, but I think... Um, no clue. No clue, but uh, at, the, at the moment, I think um, we got across the most important statement here, because data yep. becomes more and more mandatory. It's the new gold. You need to have it, you need to have a look at it, you need to have a look at it and improve your process accordingly. Two, in the end, of course, improve your performance and save money. That's all we're talking about all the time. So, period. <laughs> period. So, so this is it for this episode right now. But of course, as last time, I just want to uh, remind you um, that if we, if you are interested in the whole digital fueling process, we, you know, there are already a few episodes of us two talking about this whole topic, um, but uh, you might want to hear someone else, you know, you're tired of our voices and it, or every, anything. Um, so on the 14th of, um, of April at um, 10 a.m. CET, we will host the second episode of our future fuel lab, this time with guests from uh, Shell Aviation and Cathay Pacific. Why did we invite those two guests? Because they have actually went through the process of implementing a digital fueling solution. So Cathay approached Shell, hey, we want a digital fueling, um, so we, have, we want to use digital fueling with you. Shell had already some experience with that. So they started a joint project together and they're um, with us on stage to really talk you through every single step of the implementation process of the initial thought process that um, how they came to that point and how their feedback after half a year of usage um, currently is. So um, if you head over to our LinkedIn page, um, you can sign up there for the, for the event for free. Of course, it's completely for free. It's online, it's contactless. 
no worries about that. <laughs> um, we might want to, we, we, we would like to do it differently, but that's just the way it is right now. Um, so sign up, it's for free. Um, and uh, yeah, you will also find the link to sign up directly in, in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. If you want more information, you can check out our website um, under um, resources. Uh, you, you can find the, uh, the Future Fuel Lab page. And um, there is even another, another video of us two talking about exactly that. <laughs> We're doing too many videos. Who would have thought that? Exactly. <laughs> so um, with that, I just want to thank you again for uh, tuning into that uh, uh, episode of Refuel. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Bye. Cheers. Bye.